and welcome everyone to the opening day of RC Show 2021 Online Live. Thank you for joining us. My name is Richard Cazzo, and I'm excited to be here with you as your host over the next four days. We have such an impressive lineup of expert speakers across three stages that will excite and inspire you for the year to come. World-renowned chefs, top Canadian research experts, and business leaders will be coming live to your screen from our new Canadian technology partner, Next Tech AR Solutions. In addition to the broadcast quality programming you will see on the platform, the exhibit hall will showcase innovation at its finest and allow you to connect, collaborate with, and take advantage of solutions, special offers, and incentives during this, these unprecedented times that will excite and inspire. Today is also Independent Operator Day, presented by Group X and American Express Canada meaning all of our programming today focuses on providing support to and addressing the issues specifically facing the independent operator. Thank you, Group X Canada. Group X Canada saves independent operators money through the power of, per of group purchasing relevant to all segments of the hospitality industry, from family-style restaurants to fine dining rooms to hotels. And thank you to American Express Canada and their Shop Small program. Now, I'd like to call upon the Restaurants Canada CEO and President Todd Barkley to come up and officially open the show. Todd? Well, hello, everyone. Rise and shine on this beautiful Sunday morning. We're coming to you live into your living rooms and restaurants or wherever it is that you happen to be today. We're so happy to have you join us. I, it is my incredible privilege and honor to welcome you on behalf of all of the teammates of Restaurants Canada, as well as our Chair Guy Laframbois and our Board of Directors to this year's 2021 RC Show Online Live. We're so happy to have you here with us today. I'd like to start by acknowledging and thanking all of you for attending today, our vendors, our partners, your partnership, as well as all the exhibitors. Without your help, and quite frankly, uh, you know, coming to, to this show with us today, without, without your leap of faith, this never could have happened. And in fact, I would also like to reach out and say, I so much appreciate the personal notes that came to me in thanks for putting on this show. So many things over the last year have been canceled as we know, and we knew that it was incredibly important for us to come together as an industry over the next four days to come together so that we can rebuild this great industry going forward. It's no doubt that it's incredibly important for us all to be together as we rebuild, reconnect, and reinvent. When we were together about a year ago in Toronto, 20,000 of us were networking and celebrating collectively. Who could have ever imagined what would have happened over the next year? There's no doubt that what we've experienced has been extremely devastating for our industry. Many, unfortunately and tragically, have seen closures. And ultimately, we also know that there's a significant number of people who are still struggling uh, in our industry today. There's no doubt that these struggles have been ones that uh, have been very, very hard for people to work through. Your resilience has been incredibly inspiring. And not just your resilience, but also the incredible stories of how the industry has come together to help those in need both those within the restaurant industry, as well as various different frontline workers and homeless people who've needed help through this time of, of great need. It has been an ex extremely large challenge for all of us. And I want to say that I have been inspired by all of the incredible amount of, of reach out and work that all of you have done over the, the past year. As we look to the future, there certainly is some light at the end of the tunnel. We know that as vaccinations are happening within long-term care homes and other vulnerable people within our society, we're starting to see that there is some hope for us moving forward. And we think it's incredibly important for us to come together right now as an industry so that we can move forward collectively together. This year's theme is feeding the recovery. And that theme has been never more relevant than it is today. It's extremely important for us to come together to rebuild reconnect and reinvent. Of course, this show is going to be a little bit different because it is virtual. However, 
you can still expect and you will realize the same world-class content that we've been able to put together every year. We have four action-packed days planned for you. Over 100 panelists will be speaking with you about their thoughts and ideas and inspiration and, and ways that they're going to be moving their business forward, as well as talking about the ways in which they're able to get through this pandemic. There's also an opportunity for you to connect directly with vendors in our virtual exhibition hall. It's a great opportunity for you to connect with these organizations who can, who can talk to you about your business and ways in which they can help to support you moving forward. We'll also be spending time digging into very important issues like diversity and mental health within our industry. We'll be recognizing the best of the best as we come together in various different events and have our RC Excellence Awards. And we'll also be having competitions, the Garland Culinary Competition, as well as the Beyond the Rail Competition. So much great content for you to consume and connect with each other over the next four days. So once again, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. If you have any questions or would like to reach out to the team, please don't hesitate to do so. And with that, I will officially declare that the RC Show 2021 Online Live is now open. Back to you, Richard. Thank you, Todd. As you can imagine, this year's theme of feeding the recovery has never been more appropriate with our industry losing more than 800,000 jobs at the height of the pandemic. And as the voice of Canada's food service industry, Restaurants Canada has been there to support every step of the way that can, and continues today with a jam-packed scheduled of jam-packed schedule, excuse me, of solutions-based content broadcasted to you live, all designed to offer valuable insight, support, and advice to help you, the industry, rebuild, reinvent, and reconnect. I highly recommend that you visit the exhibit hall and take in some of the best in-booth presentations and demonstrations from this year's industry partners. Plus, through our attendee contest, you'll be able to compete to win amazing prizes just for engaging with all aspects of the show platform, from visiting pavilions and feature areas to attending events such as opening night reception and the Breakfast with Champions events. Some of the items that you can win include a La Croissette pot set from Garland Wellbit Canada, that's got value of $1,000, a smart self-ordering pay kiosk from Brand Media, valued at $3,500, and a continuing education course at Centre for Hospitality and Culinary at George Brown College, valued at $420 and more. And you could also win by attending the opening night reception with Breakfast with Champions event. Our opening event presented by Rally for Restaurants from, from Stella Artois is being held tonight from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. And you won't want to miss Canada's largest online industry networking event. Experience the excitement of entertainment as we launch RC Show 2021 online live. Reconnect with colleagues and old friends while making new connections. One lucky winner will also take a Stella and Starters prize pack, including an Uni pizza oven, a case of Stella Artois chalices, charcuterie boards, and bar stools valued at $2,000. Breakfast with Champions is Restaurants Canada's annual power breakfast where you will gain insights from the latest research and inspiration and knowledge from Danny Meyer, Maeve Webster, and David Hanks. This year, when you attend the Breakfast with Champions event, you will not only gain the latest research and insights and hear from industry leaders, but you will have a chance to win a virtual interactive tasting kit for up to 10 people from Dairy Farmers of Canada's ambassador, David Bodwin, valued at $3,500. Breakfast with Champions is a separately ticketed event held on Tuesday morning. You can add tickets through the events page on this platform or visit RC Show com to learn more and get your tickets. This year, we've brought our three main stages to life, where you'll be hearing from some of the best industry innovators, leaders, and influencers from Canada and around the world. We'll also be shining a spotlight on some of the most pressing issues facing our industry today, including labor challenges, mental health, anti-racism, and much, much more. But before we get started for, with our first presentation of the day, I want to give some love to our speaker stage sponsors. First up is American Express Canada, Silver Chef, BDO, Interact, and Group X Canada. 
The show would not be the same or possible without them. We also want to let you know that you can participate in our audience polling and ask questions through the live chat and polling functions on the screen at any time. We'll do our very best to answer your questions during the Q&A. So we're going to kick things off with Restaurants Canada's industry outlook. For the past year, Restaurants Canada has been collecting data and connecting with the industry to gain valuable insight and a deeper understanding of where our industry is headed. Joining us today to share those insights, firstly, is Lauren Vandenberg, the Executive Vice President, Government Relations, Restaurants Canada. Let's give her a warm welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us as we kick off an exciting RC show because we've got an absolutely jam-packed agenda this morning and because I know that you're actually all really here to see another masterful Chris Elliott presentation at the height of his economic game. I'm gonna take just a couple minutes to provide a high level overview of the strategic key messages that we've been delivering to all levels of government, as well as a snapshot of activities and initiatives currently underway in all your regions. So in meetings with senators, ministers, opposition MPs, MPPs, MLAs, and senior decision makers across the country, we've been consistent in sharing our messages, recommendations, and key asks. We continue to call for, number one, immediate, effective, and efficient support for our industry to survive these shutdowns. Number two, we are calling on all authorities to engage with us in developing innovative solutions to protect Canadians and to ensure that health and safety decisions are being made with economic impacts in mind. Finally, number three, we are lobbying hard to ensure that any and all reopening plans include restaurants top of mind. So what does that mean? Well, with the federal government back in full virtual swing and rumors of an election varying wildly depending on the latest poll you look at, it's already been a very, winter, very busy winter season on the GR fronts. With the pre-budget season in high gear, we have shared our Road to Revival recovery plan with key MPs, ministers, as well as officials in finance, innovation and economic developments, and many other departments. We believe that now is a unique opportunity to reassess what's worked and what hasn't with many government support programs. And we've therefore put forward several innovative solutions to ensure that restaurants across the country can survive and recover throughout 2021 and into 2022. These recommendations have been reinforced and reiterated in our ongoing discussions with the elected officials that sit on our federal task force, also known as the Restaurant Revival Working Group. This group represents a crucial opportunity for us to raise our voice and to work with government and senior decision makers to provide targeted sector specific support to our hardest hit industry and pave the way for the food service sector's revival in support of Canada's economic recovery. Meanwhile, we're seeing many regions remain under tight lockdown while other provinces invest in tentative reopenings. Restaurants Canada is working hard to ensure that our industry is included in any easement strategies. We're also in constant communication with senior staffers and elected officials, reiterating our demands for transparent data to justify our closures, efficient, effective, and immediate aid for all restaurant operators impacted by these inconsistent restrictions. And we are reinforcing all of these ongoing engagements and all of these touch points by raising our voice in national and local media through the PR campaign, Restaurants Are Family. We know how resilient and resourceful operators have been throughout this apocalypse, but we also know that you can't continue to operate at a loss for months on end. If we wanna build back a stronger, sustainable economy that continues to reflect our country's incredible diversity, our overall message to government has been that our industry is the best place to start. Ultimately, the recommendations we've proposed in our nationwide recovery plan and the solutions that we've shared through our federal working group will help to secure a sustainable future for the restaurants across the country that anchor their local communities. Should you have any questions about the initiatives and GR campaigns taking place across the country, please don't hesitate to reach out to your regional VP or to me. And with that, I am very happy to turn the virtual floor back over to our host, Richard. Thank you so much, Lauren. That was Lauren Vandenberg, Executive Vice President, Government Relations, Restaurants Canada. Now we're going to move on to Mr. Chris Elliott, who is the Senior Economist at Restaurants Canada, for a very insightful presentation. Chris? Thank you so much, Richard. And I'm just going to share my screen right now.
Great. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. And it's uh, a real honor and a pleasure to help kick off the 2021 RC show with an overview of our latest food service sales forecast. While I was putting together this presentation, I kept thinking back to how much our world has changed since last year's Restaurants Canada show. At that time, we only had about 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19. And since then, we've had more than 860,000 confirmed cases across Canada. First, over this time, we've seen the devastating impact the pandemic has had across every component and sector of the food service industry. But at the same time, we've also seen incredible amounts of innovation as operators look for new and very unconventional ways to try and survive this. Today's presentation, though, is going to focus on the future. And really, I want to tackle probably the biggest question that's on the mind of pretty much every Canadian. I want to talk about and find the answer to when. When can we go back to doing the things that we enjoy? When can we go back out and have family and friend get-togethers and celebrations like this one? Um, when will it be safe to do all this and not have to wear a mask? When can we get back to the office again and have meetings around a boardroom table instead of on a Zoom call? When can we go travel again off to some fun and hopefully warmer exotic destination? And of course, restaurant operators want to know when are the tourists coming back? On a personal level, I want to know when I can get back to a heavy metal concert. It has been 452 days since my last concert. And when it's safe to do so, I'm going to be right there in the front row. But for everybody on this call, we all want to know when can we get back to this? Spending time with our friends and family at our favorite restaurant, bar, enjoying great food, great atmosphere, great service. Is this something that we're going to see sometime in 2021, or are we going to have to wait another year or two? Are there going to be some segments that recover faster than other segments? And there's so much pent-up demand out there. Could we possibly see a return to the, the roaring 20s uh, as a result once the pandemic is over with? These are all very complex questions, and there are no easy answers. But we do have a general sense of what the economic recovery is going to look like over the rest of 2021, as well as into 2022 and beyond. And we also have a general timeline of what the vaccination rollout is going to be like. So this is all valuable information that we need to forecast food service sales. Now, we're going to have to do a little bit of math to answer some of these questions. And I, I know what you're thinking. Nobody wants to do statistics and econometrics first thing on a Sunday morning. Uh, there's just not enough caffeine in the world for that. So I decided I would take some inspiration from some chefs out there. During the pandemic, a lot of chefs would go online and social media and Instagram and share their favorite recipes. And it was really an amazing way to engage with their guests. So for today's presentation, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to share our recipe for food service sales. And as I'm about to show you, there's a lot um, of, in common with a food service restaurant sales recipe and a traditional recipe. So let me give you an example as to why. So the following is a recipe for Donna Dewar's famous scones here in Toronto. And I think it's appropriate on a Sunday morning to talk about scones. The secret to creating scones like this is to have all the right ingredients in the right quantities. If I leave out any of these ingredients or I add too much, this recipe is not gonna work out. The idea here is it's a perfect balance of all these ingredients in very specific quantities. And really this is a mathematical equation. It's three cups all purpose flour plus two teaspoons baking powder plus half a teaspoon baking soda. It is no different when it comes to a food service sales recipe either. So our recipe for everything that's going on, on the left hand side there is all about the economic indicators, demographics such as population growth, tourism, menu prices. So as menu prices increase relative to grocery stores, we see a corresponding decline in sales. We also have to account for different events that happen, such as the Vancouver Olympics, SARS, leap years, all these things that are not covered off by those economic indicators. We also have to consider the seasonings, uh, a little bit of econometric humor, just to say that we have to account for sales because sales in Q1 generally are much lower than the sales that we see in Q3. There's also habit formation uh, and something I could probably talk about for an hour, but generally speaking, it's just that food service habits trends and change very slowly over time. They, very, they adjust over time. And so there's not that instantaneous drop in food service spending. 
uh, unless, of course, we have a pandemic, in which case we have to account for that too with COVID-19. But again, it's all about getting all the right ingredients in the right quantities. So let's show you how this looks once we produce a forecast. So the following is actual food service sales from Statistics Canada from 2008. And then we have, of course, our pandemic, the drop off in Q2 2020, and then a bit of a partial recovery uh, due to an increase in uh, patio openings and a reduction in uh, containment measures by the government. If we overlay our forecast model, what we find is that our mathematical model generally has a good fit to actual food service sales. In fact, it explains about 98% of the total variation that we see in spending. Now, the question then becomes, if we can explain historical sales quite well, we can then forecast forward by plugging in future values of what we think GDP, disposable income, the unemployment rate will be. And then we can find out our sales going to increase, will they be flat or will they decline? So the following shows the overall food service sales forecast going forward. Now I've adjusted for seasonal adjustment just to make it clear what the underlying trends are. Otherwise you'd see a lot of zigs and zags between Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4. But if we start back in Q4, we had total sales of $19.4 billion. Then we have this decline because of the pandemic, a slight recovery because people were opening up their patios and we also saw a decline in cases. So our forecast was for Q4 to be $13.1 billion. In fact, we now have data from Stats Canada that had just come out that shows that sales were about 13.5 billion. So not too far off, and in fact, just a little bit better than what we were anticipating. But due to the increase in the number of cases and plus all the containment measures that have been put in place in January and February, we don't expect to see much of a change in overall food service sales in Q1. As the number of cases decline and as we start to get some better weather, we'll start to see a little bit of an improvement in Q2. And certainly as patio season ramps up, we'll see food service sales improve in Q3. We'll also notice that food service sales in Q3 in 2021 will be a little bit higher than what we saw in 2020. So definitely a sign that things are improving. And then as we get the number of vaccinations rolled out, we'll see food service sales increase steadily over time so that by Q4 2022, sales will be back to where we were prior to COVID-19. If we roll these sales up to annual numbers, what we see is there's about a 28% decline in food service sales in 2020. And then we just see this modest increase in 2021. But keep in mind, a lot of this is due to very weak sales in the first half, but that'll be offset by much stronger sales in the second half. It's not until about 2022 that we start to see a full year of healthy food service sales growth, but we still don't fully recover until about 2023. It's at that point we'll start to see an improvement in business spending, uh, increased business travel, as well as international tourism will pick up. So that by the end of 2025, we're looking at sales of about $84.7 billion. Now, in terms of underpinning why we're seeing this, uh, we have to look at some of the economic indicators. Gross domestic product is probably the most valuable economic indicator because the stronger the economy is, the stronger food service sales will be. We see this steady increase in GDP, followed by a 7% contraction in the first quarter, and then a 38% annualized contraction in the second quarter of 2020. And that represented the largest decline in economic activity since StatsCan began collecting data in 1961. We see this partial recovery, similar to what we saw in food service sales. And then the forecast is going to continue to climb so that by the fourth quarter of 2021, food service sales will return back to pre-COVID levels. We'll then see steady economic growth that is in line with the economic growth that we've seen in the past. But what I wanna do is go right back to this recession because this is a very unique recession. If we think back to historical recessions back in the 1980s and the 1990s, those were caused by the usual ebbs and flows that we see in the economy. It'd start off with very strong consumer spending, which would cause the economy to overheat, which would lead to higher inflation. Then central banks would step in, raise interest rates, and that would basically lead to a big pullback in consumer spending and in business spending. And as a result, we would see a recession. 
The 2020 pandemic recession was not the result of a lack of consumer demand per se, but really a lack of supply. Because of government mandated shutdowns of non-essential businesses, uh, as well as border travel, um, the demand was there, but there was just no place to spend it. And so as the economy starts opening up uh, in the second half of 2021, we'll start to see real GDP grow. Um, but of course, all of this is going to be very contingent on people taking the vaccines, seeing a decline in the number of COVID-19 cases, and then the government allowing the economy to open up even more. It's also critical to, and very important to know that there is an incredible amount of stimulus out there right now, both in terms of monetary and fiscal policy, that is going to drive up this economic growth. Um, so two very key components uh, between the monetary policy, fiscal policy, and a decline in COVID-19 cases. Disposable income is another very important factor. Generally speaking, the more income people have, the more they're going to spend at restaurants. Now, again, in a typical recession, we would see a decline in disposable income or at least flat disposable income. But in this case here, we actually saw a big spike in disposable income. So again, very unconventional recession. So even though we did see a decline in wages and salaries, this was more than offset by an increase in uh, government program payments, such as the Canada Emergency Response Benefit or CERB. This is going to continue on for a little bit, and then things start to mellow out again, basically because as the economy starts to pick up momentum, uh, people will be less reliant on those government programs, and then we'll see disposable income continue to grow, to grow going forward. Let's contrast that with overall household spending on goods and services. So we see this steep decline in the second quarter of 2020, a bit of a recovery, actually a fairly strong recovery just because of pent-up demand. But overall, household spending is not expected to return back to pre-COVID levels until about the fourth quarter of 2021. Now, there are going to be some segments in some industries that will recover faster. So groceries, for instance, have already above pre-COVID levels. Other elements within the retail sector will see much faster recovery times. And then, of course, food service, hospitality, tourism are going to take much longer to recover. One of the other things that I want to point out here is this gap between these two lines. So that gap between what people make in income and what they spend is their savings. And in the second quarter of 2020, we had a savings rate of 27.5%, which is a record high. Typically, you would see a savings rate of closer to about 2%. And so all that savings is out there. And the question then becomes, what are they going to do with it? Are they going to spend it or are they going to save it? And based on surveys from the Bank of Canada, what we found is that more than half of Canadians plan on saving that either to invest or to pay down their debt. So we're not expected to see a big spike in consumer spending. In fact, as you can see here, consumer spending is going to grow about the same pace as disposable income. One of the other, um, I think one of the most unique indicators that I've had to work with this year is the stringency index. And this is one that was created by the Bank of Canada. And it's designed to measure the impact of COVID-19 through government enforcement measures. So school shutdowns are included in this, workplace shutdowns, uh, stay at home measures, as well as the effectiveness of trying to keep people uh, from going out. So what we have here is as the index climbs, there's much more enforcement, um, and much more containment measures in place. And then as the index fell over the summer, we saw a decline in number of COVID-19 cases. And so those containment measures were relaxed. Since October, however, this index has continued to climb and it will have continued into 2021 and certainly into February as well as part of March. But this has been a valuable indicator because it really ties in closely with the numbers and the trends that we've seen for full service restaurants, caterers, and drinking places. I also want to highlight that there's data by province too. And in some provinces, such as Ontario and Quebec, the containment measures have been much more stringent. And so they would be up in this range here. While Atlantic Canada, where the containment measures have been less so stringent, we've been down here in this case here. But what we found is that the provinces that have the most stringent containment measures are also the ones that saw the largest declines in food service sales. Uh, conversely, those that had fewer containment measures enforced on them saw less of a decline in food service sales. 
one of the most interesting indicators that we've seen, and I think there's a lot of questions about, is what's going to happen with travel and tourism. So travelers to and from Canada plummeted by about 97% in 2020. And basically, this is a huge dent to the food service industry. So international travelers and visitors, they spend about $4.3 billion a year on food service alone. And so we saw basically a 97% decline in those sales. Domestic travel, on the other hand, was actually interesting. Uh, we did see a pullback in that spending. But in the Q3 2020, domestic food service spending was down by only about 25%. So people were taking road trips, but uh, that helped drive up or at least support some of the food service sales that we saw. Of course, the big question is, what's going to happen in the year ahead? And according to the OECD, uh, a recovery in the global tourism to pre-crisis levels is not expected before 2023. Um, so it's going to take some time. And what we're hearing is that certainly in the first half of 2021, uh, maybe even to Q3, we're just going to see more road trips. So we're going to see most of that spending from tourists on the domestic side rather than from international tourists. We also believe that business spending is going to be one of the last segments to recover as well. So what does this all this mean for the food service industry? So for each of the segments, um, quick service restaurants was the least impacted from the pandemic with sales down about 13%. What we found is that from our surveys that Canadians felt very comfortable being out uh, and ordering from restaurants through drive through takeout and delivery, which quick service restaurants are in really a fantastic shape to do. Also in 2020, we did see a few segments and a few provinces where sales were actually higher in 2020 than they were in 2019. Uh, so in PEI, Saskatchewan, Newfoundland, Labrador, sales were up in October and November of 2020 compared to that same period in 2019. We'll see a little bit of a, an improvement in 2021, uh, but it's really not until 2022 that quick service restaurants will return back to pre-COVID levels. It's also important to point out that in 2019, quick service restaurants were the second largest segment in the food service industry. But because of the pandemic, they're gonna end up as the largest segment of the food service industry when all this is over with. By comparison, we see a significant drop off in food service sales here in 2020, down about 38%. And again, a little bit of a mild recovery here. So not a big increase, uh, only about $3.3 billion. Uh, but this is masked a little bit because even though we expect sales to be down about 45% in the first quarter of 2020 compared to 2019, by the fourth quarter of 2021, sales are only expected to be down by 15%. So we do expect to see a fairly strong recovery throughout the second half of 2021. And it's in 2022 that we feel that full benefit of that recovery in food service sales. Sales will be about 32.3 billion but certainly not back to pre-COVID levels. So as business spending starts to improve, as we start to see an increase in the number of international visitors, food service sales should return back to pre-COVID levels roughly around 2023. But as I stated before, uh, they will not be quite as high in terms of overall sales as quick service restaurants. Caterers is another segment that was um, hit extremely hard. We saw almost a 50% decline in sales in 2020. You have a number of segments within this, uh, such as managed service providers at schools, uh, education, uh, colleges, universities, as well as in healthcare, transportation, such as cruise lines, uh, remote camps, as well as business dining. So a lot of categories within this, as well as you had social caterers. Uh, so you had a lot of weddings that were canceled, uh, graduations that were canceled. So all those catering events really pulled down food service sales in 2020. And very similar to what we saw with full service restaurants, uh, we're not expected to see much of a pickup until about the second, third or fourth quarter of 2021. So again, in 2022, we'll see 5.4 billion in sales, but certainly not back to pre-COVID levels. And again, we're waiting for that improvement in tourism and business spending in 2023, if not maybe 2024 before this returns back to pre-COVID levels. Finally, we have drinking places and sales again fell by about 50%. The sales are up about 1.7 billion in 2021. Again, most of that towards the third or fourth quarter of 2021. Over time though, this is gonna be the slowest segment to recover because we've seen such a big decline in the number of establishments 
And consumer surveys have told us that people are really not enthusiastic about going out to a drinking place anytime soon. So that recovery time for bars, taverns, and nightclubs is going to take much longer than the other segments. In terms of provincial growth, like I said at the beginning, uh, the provinces that had the most stringent containment measures uh, were the ones that saw the largest decline in food service sales, down about 32%. Meanwhile, we had other provinces which didn't have as high of COVID-19 cases, uh, therefore didn't have the stringent measures put in place. Uh, they saw much smaller declines in food service sales. And as I said before, there were even some areas within the quick service restaurants in Saskatchewan and Atlantic Canada where sales were actually above 2019 levels. So looking ahead, what we see is that Alberta is a forecast to have the strongest food service sales growth followed by Saskatchewan and Ontario. At the other end of the spectrum, we have Atlantic Canada, which is down by about 9%, but PEI is closer to about the growth that we're gonna see in Ontario and British Columbia. So when we talked about our recipe for food service sales, a lot of that on a quarterly to quarterly basis is movements in the economy. In terms of the long-term growth, the number one major predictor of long-term growth is actually population growth. So the stronger the population growth, the stronger the food service sales are gonna be. So if we look at Statistics Canada's latest forecast, um, Alberta is gonna lead the country with population growth of 1.9%. Um, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that you have a much younger population there. If we have a weakness in the commodity sector, that may pull down the population growth, but certainly a much stronger rebound in commodity prices would lead to much stronger growth in Alberta, as well as Saskatchewan. And then of course, at the other end of the spectrum, we have Newfoundland Labrador, which actually starts to see a decline in the population. New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, really not much gains in terms of growth. Uh, although the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program was a success, uh, in bringing up the population over the last couple of years, uh, we need to have that continue going forward. Uh, and unfortunately, that's going to end in 2021. So this is sort of an explanation as to why we see the provincial growth that we do. So I also want to finally tackle that question about could we see a return to the roaring 20s? And as you can see from the forecast, we're not seeing exceptional growth here. We look back at the roaring 20s. That was really euphoric spending over the course of a decade following the end of World War I, as well as the Spanish flu pandemic. But a lot of that was driven by transport, uh, productivity gains, as well as uh, a growth in uh, productivity, let's say, uh, in technology, which made it affordable for the average household to afford a car or household appliances. The challenge here is that we're not seeing that, those big gains in productivity or in technology. And so this, combined with the fact that we have high household debt still, that it's going to still take some time for unemployment rate to come back down, as well as if we think back to some of the major drivers of food service sales growth prior to the pandemic, a lot of that was from the Gen Z generation. Because of the pandemic, the Gen Zs have been the hardest hit out of all this financially in terms of their jobs, in terms of wages. And so it's going to take longer for them to recover. So there will be some pent up demand. We'll see some fairly strong growth in some quarters of the food service industry, but certainly not something that's gonna carry forward over the coming years. So in summary, uh, real GDP and total consumer spending are forecast to return to pre-COVID levels around the fourth quarter of 2021. Food service sales are forecast to return to pre-COVID levels around the fourth quarter of 2022. QSRs are expected to be the first to recover while drinking places will be the last. In terms of the recovery by province, really population growth is what's going to determine long-term food service sales growth. Now, all these numbers are contained in our long-term food service forecast, which we're going to be releasing in the next little while. Uh, so keep an eye out on our website for the release of that. So with that, I will turn it back over to Richard. And I'm going to turn and stop sharing. All right. Well, Chris, thank you so much for that presentation. I also want to thank the Restaurants Canada team for sharing their insights. Todd Barkley, President and CEO, of course, Chris Elliott, Senior Economist, and Lauren Vandenberg, the Executive Vice President, Government Relations. It was just a great way to kick off the day um, of, our, of our, excuse me, speaker stage. And even hearing Chris's insight pertaining to what's going to happen next and his 
his pining for a Metallica concert and travel. I think we can all feel that way that we're all looking for, you know, that, that semblance of normality in that experience where we can all be together as one in a very sort of connected community type of way. So I really appreciate the presentation gave me a lot of insight and you know what traveling to, waiting to travel in the next couple of years or eat at a restaurant in the next couple of years is haunting and daunting at the same time. It's fully incredible, but you know what? We are working towards that recovery and I love what we're doing here at Restaurants Canada. So it'll be a phenomenal experience over the next four days to discover more and more what people are doing and to put things in perspective about where we're heading. So I really enjoy this panel and I don't want you to miss what's coming up next. Coming up in 15 short minutes, we've got Voodoo Donut, how the iconic brand built a cult following. What we're going to be doing is hearing from their CEO, Chris Schultz, about how a hole in the wall, tiny donut shop in Portland, Oregon, grew expanding to multiple locations across the U.S. and hearing how, while some brands slowed down last year due to the pandemic, Voodoo Donuts accelerated plans by bringing their brand online and struck to their, excuse me, stuck to their core business in order to thrive.